play one venue in the northwest and then they would get in contact with the other venues that they knew the other people that they knew and then your gigs are kind of domino from there you know from the first one to you know to the 50th in a year Manchester. Music has always been a big part of who we are. If you don't know who the Stone Roses or Oasis are, you don't belong here. That music started a fire, became legend and has influenced so many. This is a journey about modern artists and their unique influences and their hopes for the future. And every journey has a start. Um, my first live performance which was with my very first band who were absolutely shockingly bad and it was in my high school canteen and I felt like like a rock god and I was about 13 and it was probably really really poor but at the time you know it felt mega but yeah like my first proper gig in Manchester was at, um, at Sound Control. Yeah, so basically we just started our own night called Club Crimson's, which is um, it's kind of our little venture into something new. We wanted to see if we could do push, we'll push put, that back. Put bands on every month, DJ sets, poetry, that kind of thing. Just what, like, kind of like a creative space, didn't we? Yeah, a bit of an alternative option to whatever's do whatever going wanted, on, really. Yeah. It's clear that time has changed Manchester's music scene, but the influence and legacy that these new bands carry has the same heart it's always had. Oh, children. Children yeah, respond children, to the music yeah. the most. If you have people walking around with kids, like do the they, head always, they always listen. They always listen. <laughs> they do, actually. And then they have to drag the kids away. <laughs> Not anymore now, I'm, now I've got like a full-time job that's like rubbish in comparison to playing like live music, but yeah, kind of at the time when I, when I was in college and uni and we were doing it, it was, you know, there's a certain degree of, oh, you know, Dino's in that band and there's kind of a, I don't know, like a coolness attached. I don't know, like it sounds really cringe, but yeah. <laughs> Every band has had their own idea for the music industry and attempted to create their own style. Kind of indie, dark, kind of, um, a bit Psy dark, a bit dirty, psyche, sinister. Psyche goth. Psyche goth. Psyche goth love. Soft, yeah. something like that. <laughs> yeah. It's obvious from this that new bands struggle for fandom. Social network success is key for a starting band. So how do they get their names heard? Probably massively, because obviously there's a kind of, I don't know, people like to kind of get behind bands and they like to hear bands who put out new stuff all the time. And with SoundCloud, it's all so quick and Facebook and Twitter and all that. Because we, we used to put across our opinions quite a lot and we, we were very, I think the biggest thing about my old band and why we got so like recognised and stuff like that was because we were quite open and we were quite willing to let people in to a lot of what we were doing and stuff. Yeah, if Facebook does this thing where it, like, it stops you from, once you get a certain amount of likes on Facebook, whatever, it like, stops you from reaching out to as many people, so you have to start putting money into it. And then it only shows like 5% of your audience or something. Yeah, exactly, it only shows 5% of what you can fucking show to. Just rinsing you, every Balls little penny. It. It's estimated that nearly 90% of signed artists fail. Because of this, most bands wish to stay independent and write their own music. Through doing this, they can hone their talents and stand a better chance of making it big in the future. I think that's the biggest thing, actually. I think with, with a lot of like artists as well, I think that when you do it DIY, it's very easy to kind of throw in the towel if it becomes yeah. too difficult. But you have to remember that there's so many people who haven't seen you or haven't heard you and you just have to put yourself out there as much as possible to kind of find them. Yeah, we've just recorded our EP this week. Yeah. We've just finished doing that. I around think, May time. Yeah, around May. And it's sounding, sounding cool. We're all Sounds really happy pretty good, yeah. Did have uh, our Christophe, are not we? Yeah. Our crazy French uh, producer. Loves it. He's a mad bastard. Yeah, he's a bit Surrogate, of a mad bastard. Surrogate father. Yeah. <laughs> Once the foundations of the band have formed and begins to grow in the industry, it's every artist's dream to be signed. 
but they are taking a huge risk as they now give away their creative control. Managers are still important because you can't book a gig from social. We well, can't. But, like, <laughs> it's um, it's a difficult one. It's a difficult. One. It's, it's, it it's, takes it's, off the the complete pressure when you're starting off to like get gigs and stuff like that. But I think you're always going to need the manager to like kind of take some pressure off you doing uh, admin kind of work. It is common for every artist to be let down or for things to go wrong on stage. So how do these bad experiences affect the band? Other people being really shit at turning up to places that I needed them to be. So, um, you know, with, with my old bands, it's kind of unreliable band members and stuff like that. And um, people not quite having the same sort of desire for it that I did. There's always been a big kind of issue for me. I mean, generally, there's more good days than bad days. Yeah. Would you say? Yeah, yeah. I'd say so, yeah, yeah. definitely. I think if it wasn't like that, I don't think we would be doing it if there was more no. bad days than good days. No. No. Yeah. So far it's good. And the summer is coming, which is yes. amazing. So. Yeah. All bands have a starting idea to create their own music, but it's very rare that they have any future in the industry. Not as a career. I could see myself doing it as a, in like a songwriting capacity as a career, uh, but probably not myself. I don't think... You know, I'd have to find something insanely marketable about myself that, that, that perhaps I don't have. But, but in terms of the songwriting side of things, I could write 30 tunes a day, you know, and three of them are going to be okay, the other 27 are going to be really pants. But I've kind of got that drive in terms of the writing the songs, and that was always what's kind of spurred me on to do it. And um, yeah, but it's been more about for me kind of getting people together and having a good time and, you know, putting on trips and stuff like that. And people have always enjoyed it, so yeah. Touring? I need a new shower mm. curtain. <laughs> um, Hopefully just to be able to make a living off it would be the dream. It's just solely focus on that and be happy. Release music, maybe change perspectives. Yours for one. <laughs> just, make, just create something and then hope it lasts. Yeah. We are a city rooted in art. We wear passion like a sleeve in our own culture. These unique ideals and passions define just what the legacy of our city is. This is Manchester. We do things differently here.